Holy heck, that's a wall of mud. We are currently halfway along the Thousand Dollar Track, perhaps one of Australia's most notorious four-wheel drive tracks. Oh, good drive! Look at that, it's up to me doors. We've been on the track for two full days, having camped last night on the track itself. Each vehicle is starting to feel the effects of constant mud. Electrical gremlins are starting to pop up their heads, and of course, radiators are clogged. Now, late in the afternoon of day two, after winching both Sooty and the D-Max around this nasty bog section, things have gone south. Yeah, you've done a steering arm. You have a spare one? We've got no spare tie rod and night is approaching. Getting this vehicle moving is gonna be an absolute mission. I don't even know how we can get this vehicle out. We've gotta come up with a solution. We've gotta do it fast. A broken tie rod makes driving a vehicle virtually impossible. Simply put, this part holds your wheels straight and allows you to steer. Without it, the tyre will just flop independently of the other wheel. An inability to steer is simply not an option if we want to get this vehicle off the track. It's all hands on deck to get the vehicle into a better spot, to jack it up, remove that wheel and assess the damage. So Griffey, mate, get some tyres with less tread. Where's that, uh, where's the start of with a couple of plans on the drawing board, we swing into plan A. Well, the Brains Trust has come up with a bit of a, a couple of ideas, actually. Plan A is got to be the best one. If this one works, we're absolutely laughing. It's a D-Max uh, steering arm. We had one in the camera car, so the thread actually fits on here, which is amazing. We just need to make sure that this end fits up in there, so we'll see if that can work. It's not going to be exactly right, but that'll get us out of, that'll be the best solution by far. If by some miracle a D-Max steering arm fits, we are home and hosed. Yeah. Have we got a little shifter or something? Or some vice grips? No locking tabs. If this just screws on, we're up, we're up, we're out. What a weird situation. We should wrap this in a garbage bag too or something. Imagine that. That's so disappointing. We can't, um, He's a sealed, eh? How do you get that out? Yeah, get I don't think you do, I'd say they're pressed in. That would have been so good. So plan A, of course, didn't work. A D-Max steering arm does not fit a Raptor steering. We, we knew that, but we're just very optimistic at this stage of the day. Um, so plan B, which is the one I think is gonna get us out of here. Um, ratchet strap, we're gonna hold the steering tight and we're just gonna send it. We'll be able to get this out, there's no doubt we'll about it. Just get someone to adjust the straps as we go. The concept behind the ratchet strap idea is a sound one. We're gonna put a ratchet strap on either side of the wheel, meaning it won't be able to turn left or right. Keeping it straight is the object here. All right, I think that's just about done it. A couple of cable ties to make things tidy. Um, we've got two ratchet straps, one on either side, this hub here, and um, the wheel, yeah, thanks, will still um, clear. It's got a little bit of movement, and we want a little bit of movement, but it can't go full lock, so that's the key. So. <laughs> tire will steer. This one will just hopefully follow. It's like a lazy tire, if you want to call it that. Either way, that hopefully just gets us off, at least off this hill so we make camp tonight and somewhere flat and not in the mud. But I reckon this is the ticket to drive out of here. Just hang tie these up. With the bush mechanic fix in place, time to put that tire back on, see how it goes. Have we got the little jack out? Yep. Have a go at that. It seems to be working. One thing playing in our favour on the thousand dollar track are the ruts. If we can keep that tyre in the ruts, it'll straighten itself. Brand new one, mate. Now it's straightened up again. Look at that. Lazy steering. No, he's right. Look at that. Needs to be able to do it. It's actually not bad, bro. That's it. I need that bank to come back anyway. Unfortunately, the thousand dollar track is anything but straight. Directly in front of us is a hard left hand and then right hand S bend. When you've got a vehicle that can't turn, that's difficult. Yep. All right, stop, stop. Yeah. Back off the winch. Well, so far, 
the verdict is good. It's getting dark, but that's okay. It does that. Um, we've got a really tight turn now. We've made it all through this bog hole so far, and now's the bit we need to get completely turned this way. Very hard to do without steering, but we're gonna use the winch to do most of the steering. So we're gonna go, for, we've got trees here all the way around, winch up, back, winch across, just gonna slide the front over until we can get the vehicle pointing through here. We can get it straight up here. We'll get up the top. Yep. And um, I just told the other boys, just every man for himself almost at this point of the time, just um, go for it, straight through the bog holes, get up behind here. And if we get vehicles behind this one, we can actually use winches on the rear to turn from the rear as well, so. Yep, all right, well, let's do a couple of little pulls here and see what happens. All right, guys, we've been here for nearly four and a half, five hours. We've only got three cars across, pretty full on, and it's now quarter to nine, so here we go. Rob and Kaido start to make their way up through these bog holes to the back of Dino's stricken vehicle so they can lend a helping hand as a rear winch point. Yeah, well done. Thanks. Thanks, Kaido. This track isn't getting any easier. Oh yeah. So many hidden roots of rocks through here. It's just insane. There sure is, mate. And in this case, they've caught the rear spring hangers of the 76. Kaido tries to find a different line, but it's just no go. Other way. She's hung up. I can tell you that much. And this is where teamwork comes into play. Each bloke helping the bloke front and behind to get through the obstacles. We're working together as a team just to make it somewhere flat and dry to camp another night on the $1,000 track. Look at that, it's even steering for us. For once, the Tassie Mart is actually working in our favour. Is providing very little grip on the track, and that means we can actually slide this vehicle sideways. By doing so, we're able to turn corners using only the winch. Stop, stop. Pretty remarkable. We're just going to have to get the other winch behind you, mate. So the tub of Dino is really close to this tree, so we're going to use Rob's winch on a snatch block to pull the tail over. We only need to pull it about a metre or so, and then we can continue winching from the front and try and get Dino up and around this corner. So we'll see how we go. Dean, let's just have a bit of a uh, drive forward, mate. Rob, you just hold the tension on the back. Okay, Dean, winch forward, mate, and just keep an eye on your side. We'll watch the front. With the rear winch mount in place, we've now got a way to keep the vehicle from sliding into that tree and doing significant panel damage. It's a complex operation, using one winch to hold the vehicle in place and the other to pivot the front around. It's a slow, slow Stop process, and we've still out. got the rest of the convoy to get through. Yeah, he's good. Okay, we'll reposition you, mate. You're, uh, you're away from that tree. What a night. Well, that's worked remarkably well. We had a couple of winches going. We had to steer with winches in this case. But the best news is we got away from that tree and uh, back on the track. So they can pretty much drive now. Well, that's what we're going to give a go anyway. That's it. Get in that rut. Steer passenger side. That's it. Cords, mate. Keep coming, that's it, nice and smooth. Don't stop, don't stop. Keep coming, keep coming, keep it coming, keep coming. There you go, all the way to the top. Stop when you see a car. <laughs> or if you get to the hut, get the fire going for us. At last, after several hours, we've finally got Dean through and he's on his way to the top. But we've still got a lot of work to do. It's nearly midnight, but we've got no choice bomber, but just to keep you know pressing on. All right, we went, Jim. These bog holes are unrelenting. We drive five metres, we winch 50. This really is a team effort. Right hand down. Left hand down. You know it. And drive it like you stole it. Give it a bit of mayo. Give it a feed. Rob's free of the mud and about to send his way to the top and he's got plenty of power in that rig to see him up. Go for it, mate. Yeah, he's stoked. There's only one thing to do right now, and that's just to bring it home for the team. After nearly eight hours stuck on this section of track, we could use something to get the spirits up, and Kaido is ready to deliver. Yes! yes. Woo! There we go. Yes! There we go. Put all your lights on, go for it, mate. Kaido's got the big 76 absolutely humming. He monsters his way into those car-swallowing ruts. I don't know how you're going to go here. You've got a big rock step to get up here, but yes. give it a go, mate. All right, come up now. Give it a bit of feed. Put, 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 Sometimes horsepower, lift, lockers, 
tyres. What a day. Mean absolutely nothing, especially in Tassie mud. One last climb and we can finally move on and find a camp. Put the pedal to the floor, mate. Bring your back on. Do not back off. Yeah. Yeah. Nailed it! <laughs> not bad. Well, that was one right. of the most epic drives I've seen. Oh, the noise of that. It's it's, got, that'll keep you going for another few hours, I reckon. Will, but I reckon I'm done. <laughs> you reckon <laughs> campsite? Yeah, I reckon we try and find something, mate. I'm thinking something with grass near yes. a river. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's wildlife. to see some wildlife. That'd be that. nice. Little, oh, Well, okay. how about, how about this? Just not on this hill in the mud. <laughs> something flat. Something flat. <laughs> yeah, mate, how good's that? Night run into a campsite. I reckon yeah. literally. Two minute right. noodles for dinner. Yeah. And a cold beer. That'll Ooh, do, mate. Stop it. That'll do. Oh, that'll yep. do. Come All right, let's go. Let's do it. For the second night in a row, we find ourselves camping directly on the $1,000 track. It ain't pretty and there ain't much room, but it's flat and it's relatively mud free. It's nearly one in the morning. Everybody's knackered. It's time now for a cold beer, something to eat and into the swags. Stick around, cause later in the show, Sean will be raiding the trucks for one of his dodgier cookups. The morning light tells a tale of last night's adventure. It's Swag City on this tiny patch of flat ground. But I can tell you, for our exhausted convoy, it was absolutely perfect. Now, just because you camped on the $1,000 track in the mud, doesn't mean you can't have some of life's little luxuries. Mate, I reckon when it comes down to the best trackside campsites. This is not it. <laughs> wouldn't be even close, wouldn't even be close. But I'll oh. tell you what, we, we found a bit of flat ground, sort of. I was stoked, it's flat and dry. Yeah, obviously the Raptor. Yep. That's um, three wheel drive. Yeah, well it's got, yeah. One wheel steering. It's yeah, got four wheel drive. It's just got one wheel steering. It's got, yeah, you can't really steer unless it's a straight line. So. <laughs> Mind you though, that uh, Bushman County fix works really Mate, well. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Better than we could have ever have hoped for, to get a truck out like that. Well, we're not out yet. How far do you reckon we've got to go until this legendary hut? We've got a fair way, but it's it should be smoothish sailing. There's a few challenges to come, yep. which um, we'll sort out when we get there, I suppose. Yep. Let's just see if we can get into that, maybe drive some gear out down there. Yeah. Let's you get boys can watch me catch a trout down near the, the creek down the end there, the track. We haven't got time for that, mate. <laughs> All right, let's just try and get the trucks out. <laughs> let's do that. Let's something, do that. Something achievable. All right, let's get into it. The plan really is pretty simple. Just keep going. Hey Legends, a bit of a quick tip for you. We got in real late last night, this ground down here. I don't reckon it sees sun almost ever throughout the year and so she's pretty moist. I was feeling super lazy last night so I didn't get a ground mat out at all. But what you can do is just use your, your swag bag, lay it out nice and flat like that. Put the inside up and the outside down and roll your swag out on top of it. And you'll notice my swag is bone dry after being on the wet ground last night. And this doesn't really matter. That's good to go. Put your swag back in it. It's kind of the cheat or the lazy man's way to putting a ground mat down when you're getting to camp late. We've still got a lot of distance to cover, so the boys are keen to get packed up and into it early. Mate. Hey Graham, how's this for a campsite, bud? One o'clock in the morning, we had to do the best we could. Crazy man, getting in here was rugged last night. Full on. Seeing you come up that last that last hill with the rocks in it, where you had to power around the left-hand corner and come through, yeah. I was impressed with the power on tap from this thing. You went from idle to get the heck out of the way in about five metres. Yeah. Mate, it is good. The response down low yep. is really, really impressive. Down low, that's the key, isn't it? Yeah, and look, it's great to have all the power in the world up on top, but yep. when you're doing stuff like this, two things you want, reliability and torque down low to get you out of those bog holes. Now, little birdie told me that you guys take each and every vehicle that comes in separately. You don't just go bolt on, drive away. No. You look at each individual vehicle separately. Exactly right. It's not just load a file and send it. It's custom tuning every vehicle on the dyno. The last thing you want out here is something that's not reliable yep. in the heart of the car, you know? So that's really important that we're custom tuning the car. But the biggest thing you do get is when you're out here, you get that low down torque and throttle response. Mate, the proof is in the pudding watching this thing. It's incredible to watch. Look, we're super happy with this car. Obviously yep. it's only new, yeah. but it's been super impressive for its first real hit out. 
But if you could put a tune on me, I'd be pretty happy. I'll tell you what, I need all the help I can get at the moment. Mate, one arm <laughs> in the D-Max should be great. It is. I'm going to finish my coffee, mate. Let's get the heck out of here. Cheers, Graham. It would appear the Tassie Mud has claimed its first alternator. Well, tools are out this morning. <laughs> Little issue with the camera vehicle. None of the batteries are charging. And um, I'm just going to check it out and make sure that we can fix it. Now, the big GU could actually keep driving for a long way just on the batteries alone. However, this is the camera vehicle. And the camera vehicle needs to charge cameras. So we've got to fix this problem. Have a look at some of this stuff in here, mate. Whoa. There is, there's like a rat's nest in there. It's most, mostly Tassie mud. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, that is absolutely cactus. The camera crew obviously need their alternator. They're the lead vehicle of the convoy. Yep. They need to be able to start their vehicle and um, they've got a spare. So new alternator will go in. And hopefully that's all it is because we've got 11.3 volts on the battery, which is not ideal. And um, obviously the rear ones aren't charging. So we'll whack another alternator in. The good things about these TD42s, apart from being um, removable in forklifts and all that sort of stuff, <laughs> is you can actually chuck in an alternator very easily. There's only a couple of volts right at the top, so that's easy. All right, cool. let's get the new one. Lucky for the camera crew, we're carrying spares, namely another alternator. And like Sean, I said, it's a really quick fix. A quick jump to get the GU started, and we'll check the voltage, see if that alternator is doing the job. Camera crew are back in business. Time to hit the track. It ain't pretty, but that bush mechanic fix is doing the job. Dino's really got his work cut out for him here. It is a dog of a vehicle to drive at the moment, but he's doing a really good job of it. Mate, just rugging through here. Yeah, hey, Dave, got a copy, mate. Only just, mate, only just. I'm hanging on and talking. Yeah, right, mate. With Jogo driving, I don't blame you. How's this track, eh? It was overgrown last time, but this is something else. It's the gift. Oh! It's the gift that keeps on giving, mate. I tell you what. Kato, how you going? But right at the back, mate. You know, at the side of this truck, I was wondering if it's really going to live up to the name and uh, all you've been talking about, Tazzy Mud, and I can tell you, by halfway, it's definitely lived up to that. You'll be taking a fair bit of it back home with you, I think, too, mate. Yeah, she's going to be a big clean-up job, but a lot of fun. Rob, what do you reckon, buddy? Mate, uh, the thousand-dollar track's easily done itself. It's a uh, name for everyone, I think, in each car. Yeah, we're not there yet, too, so I think we're at about 500 bucks. We'll, uh, we'll keep counting. Dino? Oh, mate, it's uh, it's going pretty well, but uh, it certainly knows how you feel with a uh, broken front wing. I'm surprised how well this thing's handling, mate. Yeah, mate. The thing is, with that canopy, we can put more stuff in it. Yeah, exactly. So we've got film crews gear in there, we've got baggage, we've got all sorts of things. Yeah. So yeah. we probably have increased the weight by a couple hundred kilo. Yeah, but uh, the boys at Fulcrum put some new leaf springs. They actually put 500 constant springs in the back. To be honest, I was wondering how it would go, and yep. I can hardly feel the bit of extra weight on the back. It's still driving beautifully. Yep. I'm impressed with the way they do things at Falcon. They don't just go, well, yeah, you put a canopy on, let's just get something off the shelf. That should work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They encourage you to drop in, have a look yep. at what you're going to be doing, what you're going to be carrying, what you're going to be driving, and suited it for you. Exactly. They really took the time to measure yep. everything. And, and then uh, the bloke who measured it came over and spoke to me for, I think we were chatting for about half an hour on all the all right, right. measurements and things. So yep. yeah, they yep. really they really froth over there, which is good. Well, I'll tell you what, if we can get through this track, look at these boulders, if we can get yeah. through this track, mate, with that new canopy on, I are you laughing? There's anything. a few more new scratches on that though, mate. Yeah, I know about it. Yeah, well, I'll speak to Tim at Mitz. <laughs> He'll probably have a word with you, but yeah, I think so. He'll be right. Yep. This right here is the problem with being the first four wheel drive through in a convoy. Can we put my bodies on, I think? That is really deep. It's it's proper, like up to your sort of waist deep. Here we go. This bog hole is actually two in one. The first one isn't deep, but it's got a steep little pinch that I don't think anyone's going to get up. It's all right. The first one's not too bad, so not too stressed about that. We'll just winch ourselves out of this. The next one is the is the real one. That's we're playing for keeps. Just 
sticky mud. Hey! Well, we know how deep this is and it's proper wayside. So I actually want to winch right through this. So I'm actually setting the winch up right at the start. So yep. when I go in, I was basically driving real slow. So as I, as I winch and as soon as I get stuck, which won't take long, I'm already connected and I'm already winching out. So there's no mucking around of trying to find the winch, trying to even get the winch, run it out, trying to put it onto a recovery spot. I'm just absolutely sorted. So I spend the least amount of time in this water as possible. All right, I'll give this a go. Let's get through. See me on the <laughs> other side. Good luck, Captain. <laughs> I need, need a boat license for tracks like this, let me tell you that. Put your window up, that's my big advice. This is where you really start questioning how good the vehicle seals are and um, how long it's gonna take for water to sort of come up to your lap. Hopefully, if we get this right, we're quick enough that the water seeps in, there's no doubt about that, you're gonna get a bit of a wet foot, but it shouldn't come up above the knee level. <laughs> that's, all right, let's go for a bit of a swim. No water in here, not a drop. Come on, please, just get that nose up. It's a good feeling to have the nose come up, but you might be thinking that when you have a look at the back of the truck, oh. mate. <laughs> Got everything just relying on the winch at the moment. Nothing I can do. That nose is coming up, it's a good feeling. Is that pretty stoked to see this see the back of this bog hole the deepest bog hole I have ever decided to go for a swim in just like that we done got a little bit of mud in there not gonna lie to you literally could not have worked any better that plan went perfectly Sean I was only in that water for what 30 seconds before we had him back out and his air box was above and everything was okay but Airbox and the D-Max is perfect. I know she's sealed well. Snorkel, we're good to go. Are you feeling confident? Um, yeah, as long as we're just Johnny on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, yeah, we've got a pit crew, we'll be good. Yep. Let's do it. Right Who's that? Gotta love old trucks. Whilst Jocko and I get the D-Max ready, Sean o just completes the last little part of this particular bog hole. He attempts to complete it anyway. A quick 10 metre winch and he's high and dry. That's a thousand dollar track. You don't get to do epic tracks without a small price to pay. Yep, 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 yep. Beautiful drive, mate. Yep. Come on, boys. Yep. Winch challenge team. Precision. Look at that. Well done, boys. Oh, not much in that, if anything. Alright, well, this will be interesting. We'll be. I'm a little bit nervous, Graham. Why? Just because, you know, it's a much smaller car and it was over the bonnet of the GU and up to here. There you go, there's nothing. One of the deepest bog holes I think any D-Max has ever gone into and survived. Well, hopefully, we don't know the results just yet, but with this sort of setup, he's just gonna winch all the way through. There's nothing else you can do. It doesn't matter if you've got 40 inch tires, I don't reckon you're getting through this one. Go in, go out, and just hopefully the seals on the canopy and the D-Max are good enough to stop the water just flooding in because it's gonna be probably up the window on the D-Max, which is pretty deep. Mate, this is going to feel... It's going to feel very awkward, Graham, but we got it, mate. We, we got, got this, it. Yeah, I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned. I like what you're doing here. Just uh, I'm literally winching our way into the bog hole so that we're under tension when we get in. It's amazing how deep this is. I've already got no drive. Okay. Oh, there we go. The scuba D-Max. Oh, it's not too bad. Oh, oh. About, hang about. <laughs> hang about. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Beautifully done, mate. Beautifully done. Perfect. Keeping those wheels just idling along. Yeah, just want to keep the revs up. 
that your real strata is again. It'll feel really nice when you pop out the other side it of this will, thing. Won't it? Yeah. Good. I can't even know windows popped in, I can't see the canopies underwater. Other side's definitely not. High and dry. This will be the bit that'll take a bit. Yeah. Just gotta get the lip up and over. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a bit of foot just to get us over that. Doing it easy, mate. Well done, boys. Going for a swim, eh? Scuba. Are you ready for scuba? <laughs> really keen to have a look in the back tray, though, and see if we've got any liquid in there. I don't think we will. I think it should be bone dry. Oh, we'll be bomber. Oh, I've got a battery light on. They're sitting there saying, what going, eh? What Wind's truck. Go to the D-Max. Another day on the $1,000 track. You guys nailed that. No doubt about it, mate. Yeah, we got a battery on. Yeah. on. I got a battery light on. Yeah, you gave it a better wind over. It is probably mud in the alternator, so it's probably not charging as well. We're through, and just as expected, the D Max seals have held up perfectly. There's not a drop of water inside. So that went under there. No water in the trundle tray, and not a drop of water in the cab or the canopy. I don't think, in all honesty, I've seen a canopy do that. No. They have absolutely no water, not even down in the corner there. Pretty impressed with that. Yeah, me too. Righto, so Dino can't steer the vehicle, but something tells me that ain't gonna matter here. <laughs> Let's see how he goes. Yeah, good. All oh, quiet. Ugh. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is a weird feeling. Yeah, it's all quiet. Yeah. It's like unnerving. There's no quiet. guesses as to how this was gonna turn out. We all knew Dino would have to winch. And I tell you, he's doing it well. The good news, of course, the ruts are so deep, steering's not an issue. That's perfect. Yeah. Look at that, zero damage. Just textbook. 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 Yep. Well done, man. Cheers, mate. Absolutely perfect. Oh, oh, there's some weird angles in there. Any water inside? No, no. She's all clean. Any snacks? Okay. A quick winch through the second half, and Dino 2 is high and dry. Yeah, to go, Rob. Nice, slow and steady, mate. Come on through when you're ready. <sighs> Rob takes one last deep breath and dives in. All right, we're coming out. With Rob through, we are just about done here. Yep. Kaido to go. Righto. Let's see how we go here. He's going to drive this. He's given it a red hot go, but like the rest of us, it's out with the winch for the first part. That's an angle. Yeah! Nice one, mate. Nice one. Bloody beautiful, mate. Kaido's perched up on the little island between the two bog holes. We'll just reset that winch line. And he can go for a swim. There's that eerie silence. Oh my god. I see body. Oh! <gasps> there's no way. Yes, Kaido, there's 100% away. All the way. Through to the other end. You've got this, mate. Yeah, that's it, that's it. 10 centimetres to winch, that's it. That's it, that's it, out. Man, that was insane. Dino's been battling with this rig all day. And with so many challenges, we've had straps breaking virtually every kilometre. We're actually starting to run out of straps in the convoy, but still, we're getting the vehicle through. Make our way through this track now. It is so overgrown, both sides of the vehicle. It's just, you hear that? I don't know if you hear that noise, it's just branches just going down each, each side of the vehicle. It's just insane. I haven't seen a track this overgrown for a long time. I'll tell you what, I'm lucky I've got that Raptor coating. I mean, all these branches just running down the side of the vehicle for kilometers at a time. Can't be doing the paintwork much good. I think I'll fare better than some of the other vehicles in the convoy, that's for sure. A Raptor coating is a great investment and it really does protect a vehicle in these kind of gnarly conditions 
where normal paintwork just wouldn't stand up. Now, on a track like this, with constant mud and bogs, it's not a case of if, but when, an alternator will start to fail. There's been a lot of trouble already in the convoy, and we're the next vehicle to have issues. Unlike the camera car though, I don't have a spare alternator unfortunately. So it's time to think outside the square, and the solution is to use a donor battery from another vehicle. If we can get this healthy battery into the D-Max, be able to drive, at least start the vehicle, and also winch a little bit, we'll get that in, we'll be able to charge the D-Max battery back in this vehicle, and we'll just have to keep swapping batteries over. That's all right, we've definitely done worse before. A clogged alternator is just a part of life when you drive the tracks that we do. Now look, given I've taken the D-Max through every type of mud imaginable all over the country, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed that this is the first time I've had issues with it. Things are never perfect in the bush and you're trying to do a bit of bush mechanics. So what we're just gonna do here um, is put a couple of rags in there, shut the bonnet on it. It's still a bit pretty bumpy track out here. We don't want that battery bouncing up and hitting the old bonnet. So um, put a couple of rags, it'll be right. A few hours that'll be charged. we will swarm back over and we'll go through the process until we get out of this track, which hopefully won't be too much. Bush mechanic fixes, eh? I reckon I'll owe Rob a few beers once we make it to the Coldstream hut. Oh, a little bit of a bog hole here. Just going to test it out and see how deep it is. Oh, soft and deep. Hang on. Second gear. Luckily, Sean is able to get a run up and go backwards and forwards in this one. If he couldn't go backwards and was stuck, this would be a different story. Somehow, with a bit of back and forth and to and fro, he's managed to get through there. It's a good, solid drive. Yeah, oh, that's deep. Yeah, through. I hit it in second and um, give it a fair bit of go. Saw Sean coming through here. Struggled quite a bit to get through, so. We're going to get ready with the snatch strap, of course, we don't want to use the winch. Winch uses a heck of a lot of battery power. Battery power is something we're lacking at the moment. So we're going to get ready with the old uh, snatch strap on the front. I'm going to put this on the bonnet and get ready to try and throw it across the shore if we get stuck. But I don't think we're going to get stuck because Jocko's driving. What do you reckon? You're going to get stuck, mate. Probably going to get stuck. <laughs> Sean's just going to reverse back down to the edge of the bog hole here so that we can attach this snatch strap should we need it. Right, mate. Tell you what we'll do. Mm -hmm. You drive the wheel. Mm -hmm. I'll you drive the talking gear. Right out, we're gonna give it a red hot go, boys. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. That was a oh, not whoa. Big, nah. We got this. Oh, hang on. We don't got this. We ain't got this. The thousand buck tracks wheel ruts have been cut by some big tired trucks, and with a moderate lift, we've gotten caught up here on the high point between the two bog holes. Looks like Dino's drawn the short straw here. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. Try a little one in second gear. Mobile, we're mobile, keep it going, 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 keep it going. We're near the water now and probably able to drive on our own steam. Oh, beautiful snatch, textbook. I tell you what, mate, you weren't too wrong when you said this uh, This is a bit of a challenge. It looks pretty spicy. Oh! Oh, geez, that's nerve wracking. Dino's up now, whilst he hasn't got steering in that front right. The fact that this rut is so deep means that he couldn't oh. steer anyway. Oh. So really, he just needs to get into it, cross his fingers, and hope for the best. His wheel is hard left. Yeah. There we go. I feel like that wheel shouldn't be bending that much. And just there, right at a time when you don't want it to happen, we busted a ratchet strap. Oh yeah, that's definitely come off. One of our ratchet straps that we've used on the top of the tyre here to stop the tyre going hard left, snapped off. Not surprised either, there's a heck of a lot of load on these. So lucky, we've got a heap of strap here. So if we can just put that back in place, tie it back up again, should be going straight. We're getting there, mate. I can't believe how well you're driving this thing. Oh, it it's... must be witchcraft. Is it witchcraft, you think? I think so. All right, last major bog hole for the $1,000 track. Let's go. 
Go, go. Rob's about to unleash all of the horsepower. Let's see how he goes. Yeah. Hold on, mate. Hold on. And he's done it. Yep. Bit of power comes into play right there. Woo. Yes. About time I got through him without a winch. Give it a bit of the start, Kaido. Talking about power, here comes Kaido. Bugger, somehow Kaido's got hung up, probably on his spring hangers. Means he ain't going forward and he ain't going back. Keep coming. Go. Winch has just stopped working right when you need it the most. I think it's electrical, we're going to have to snatch it. Bring it back. Murphy's Law, hey? If a winch is going to break, it'll be in the middle of a bog hole. Just when you think you're close to finishing off the $1,000 track, you still owe about 150 bucks. Keep into it. With the knowledge that his winch ain't working, <laughs> Kaido ain't hanging around for the second half. We're finally getting toward the end of this track, and that means the Coldstream Hut. We're knackered, we're absolutely worn out, and we are looking forward to getting dry, getting a fire going, and for once, we're actually looking forward to Shawnee's cooking. Of course, this is the $1,000 track, and it don't quit in a hurry. These massive ruts are obviously caused by erosion. They get a lot of rain down through here, and for the most part, this track is pretty flat, but in this section, it's super steep. And you can see the effect it's had on the track. You can come across now. Tell you what, distance we've brought this vehicle, one wheel steering it, the amount of times we've had to stop, put another strap on it, keep it going, and to his credit, Dean has driven this thing like an absolute boss. That's it, drag around. Whew. It has been a superhuman effort. And then, like an oasis in the desert, we get a glimpse of the Coldstream River. And that means one thing, we are close to the hut. Oh, look at this. Just to be out of that dense bush, feels <laughs> so good. You're not wrong, Shorto. And I reckon the boys can't wait to park up, have a good feed, and wash off some of this thousand buck mud. What an epic couple of days, eh? We've seen everything. <laughs> Tassie's got the offer. Yeah, that's the best of it through there, I've got to say. She's a tough track, the thousand dollar track. Second time I've done it, I haven't driven it yet. And with one last river crossing, we finally arrive at the Coldstream Hut. How good's that, eh? <laughs> the hut. Oh, what a hut it is too. <laughs> How cool that? That is spectacular. That's the hut. hut. After everything we've been through over the last few days, we're finally at the hut and it feels amazing. Dino can breathe a sigh of relief. He's done it. Good work, brother. Well Good done. work. Have a go at this, boys. This is unreal. Oh, no, it's put a go. lot of effort into this hut. That's that amazing. That fireplace, I'll be stoked to have that at home. Well, I reckon I'm going to get set up. I've got a spot over there. Yeah. I reckon it's your turn to shine. Mate, it is, it is. I've got just a meal as well. What are you cooking? I'm going to have to look in the drawers because... Please don't say trout. Honestly, mate, we were out for a few days more than yep. what we expected. Yep. So Wrapped rations, up a few bills. And rations are yep. a little bit... Well, I've got slim. nothing off you. Nothing. Not, I've got not much else. So, All right. let me look. I'll have a look. Get back you see, you're, not, you're serious? You haven't got any... I don't have the exact recipe in my head yet. It might surprise oh, you, mate. Oh, I was really chef, hungry as well. It's really organised. <laughs> That's right. I mean, it usually <laughs> turns out pretty good. So All right. It's got a... Yeah, you just wait. All right. Jocko, wait. You got anything? Have faith. Have faith, Frank. Whilst Chef DeWale gets ready to cook dinner, everybody else sets up camp in the biggest, flattest and driest campsite we've had in several days.
after the last few days. I reckon you'd agree. An iron jack or two is well deserved. And one arm ain't about to stop me. It's an absolute treat to be camped here at the hut. And we've soon got a bevy in hand and the fire cranking in the fireplace. With camp set up, Shorto starts raiding the trucks to try and find something to cook for dinner tonight. Mate, how are you going? Not bad, mate. Look at the mud up in here. Oh, I know. Look, mate, I came here to raid your kitchen. Cooking up tonight. I'm cooking up an yeah. absolute storm. I don't know exactly know what I'm cooking, but I need to have a look at what ingredients you've got, mate, because I'm just raiding something from every well, sort of vehicle at the moment. we got the kitchen drawer here. I'm gonna, what oh, have we got here? here? We go. What have we got here? You see what's in there straight away. Oh, here we go. Bit of wing sauce, bit of hot sauce, salt how and pepper. These, how good are these bags, mate? I've got these you know, from you guys in my drawers. Yep. I've used them for tools. You've got your recovery gear in this one. Yep. You've got your cooking stuff in here. Yep. I've got them for absolutely everything. Yep. I'm just judging what you've got in here, mate. You've yeah, got we've them got too. Stove bag. This one. Uh, on the round. In this one. Yep. It's all about organisation of these bags, you know. Look at that. So you just basically got the perfect size bag for just about everything, yep. every application. Yep. In our whole range, we've got over 350 bags. That includes clear tops, uh, you know, your boot liner bags, canvas, that sort of thing. Just ready to go, mate. Look, yeah. I, I've split my tools up into three different clear top bags from you guys. Yep. And I've got my sockets in one, I've got 12 volt in another, and then I've yep. got everything like screwdrivers and bigger tools in the other. So if I need to like grab something out of the back of my truck, yeah, you just know where it is straight away. Yep. And it's all contained in one spot. I still can't find a 10 mil spanner when I'm looking through you know, it. I've but... lost one of those too. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, you've got all the ingredients. You've got a lot of hot sauce, a little, yep. some salt and pepper. This is for spicing things up. Okay. Well, that's exactly what I need, mate. I'm going to borrow okay. this yep. and, um, I reckon we're going to get just a little bit of kick. Hope you got lots of toilet paper, mate, because tomorrow... <laughs> oh, I'm keen for a good feed. It's been a big day. <laughs> no, this, this should be all right. Fingers crossed. Well, what a trip this has been. $1,000 track. It really has lived up to expectations. I mean, a fair bit of damage. Every single vehicle is carrying a few little wounds and um, some more than others. We've been on the track for three days to do 13 kilometres. That's almost unheard of. And um, as a result, we haven't actually planned to carry enough food. And um, so I'm basically just doing a little bit of a mix of, of rated every single vehicle here to try and get a few little bits of ingredients to make it work. Something cheap as well, because at the end of the day, we've just done a thousand buck track. We've got a lot of injuries on the vehicles. We're gonna need as much money <laughs> to put towards those repairs as possible. So a cheap and easy meal is absolutely the go. The first thing first, we're gonna chop up an onion and then get these straight in the boil. It's Hello, a mate. basic meal tonight, fellas. It's um, nothing too flash. And to be honest, I've never cooked this recipe before. Well, that's not that's right. Yeah, because that's... I've never heard of this recipe before. It's a, I don't even know the name of it, to be honest. I'm, I'm gonna call it like a, okay, thousand dollar track. How about a ten dollar meal? Okay, <laughs> that works that's, for me. That's about yeah. what we're talking about tonight. And did you actually spend 10 bucks on it or did you, you just raid everyone's fridges? It cost me a little less than that. <laughs> well, that's all right with that. That's even better. Do, do what do you need me to do? Can I do some um, garlic? Or? Yep, I'll get oh, it. Oh, garlic, yes. There's some mushrooms in there too, mate. Yeah, many. Oh, Don't. Just a couple. Don't. I've got some chicken in there. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. put these here because there's not much room for them anywhere else. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Uh, cheers, boys. The, yeah, cheers, mate. Can you just run through exactly how did that happen? Mate, when you're down your mountain bike like I do on a, uh, on a <laughs> double black diamond run, it can get a bit hectic. So you fell over in front of his cafe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm gonna chuck these mushrooms straight in, bang. Look at that. Yeah. I think this meal, I'm, I'm cooking up, it's like a, imagine a beef stroganoff. I am. But chicken. But then instead of rice, I'm using like these long life noodles. Is that what they call you a chef? Yeah, pretty much. You can't with any more mushrooms. There's a lot of mushrooms in there. That's actually <laughs> probably too many mushrooms. <laughs> if you're on a bit of a budget, Four bucks fifty a kilo. I don't even show it because it's so cheap. It's it should be it should be banned. You mate. should be selling carpets. <laughs> oh, hang on. Yeah, make a well. Make yeah. a well. Do you need more oil. Yep. It looks like you need. Put a bit in. Put a bit yeah, in. Yeah, let's go with that. Get out! I can do this. Are <laughs> you sure? Yes. <laughs> don't belittle him. <laughs> be little. Be, be, yeah, be yeah, little. Yeah. It's All actually right. a slope here, folks. A slope on the ground. <laughs> no, there isn't. There is. Well, don't lick your fingers after touching that. Found this in the bottom of one of my little drifter clear things. I'll get that for you. What's that? Look, you got what? sticky fingers. A bit of smoky Look at the chicken juice yeah, on that. Disgusting. Yeah. Wipe that. Wipe that off. Just wipe the chicken juice oh, off. Thanks, mate. Hey, hey, plenty. Plenty. Lots. That smells yeah. good. So you're coming out. This What's is the, this is the mushroom soup. Okay. Now you, mushroom, mushroom soup. soup. The way I'm going to do this is a bit different to, oh. a, to a typical meal. I'm actually inventing this one as I go. That's not different. Well, <laughs> at all. That is not remotely okay, different. Okay. Okay. Well, this one here, I'm really like scraping the bottom of the old uh, fridge because. Oh, there are croutons in there. Oh I my think goodness. There's a few cretins around here. 
Oh, no, 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 just, just a little bit of that, and that's going to mix up with the, um, the, the mushroom sauce soup. Sure. So you yeah. put in the yeah. soup. Yeah. The soup. Wait two seconds, boys. And the croutons, they'll soak up nicely. The crunchy gretons. Thick and cream. Yeah. Because any chance that you're not happy with this, we can just leave, bro. Right? Yeah, we could. Trust me, this is where we are. We can't actually. We need to take the battery in there. Yeah, you can't go anywhere, boys. We're trapped. Bit of mustard. you got to no, stir that in. More than that. Really? Yeah, way more. Go on, lick that. I, it's hot. Give, give a little. Mate, your arm's broken, but your too. mouth's not. No, you got it. Hey, right. Speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of good good spices, <laughs> I actually, ooh, your nose is buzzing. Oh, yeah, you put oh, a lot there. Rated Kaido spice straw. What's you ooh. got? Well, oh, you got some good stuff in here, I'll tell you what. Oh, it's just chili? over there, yeah. Is that Cholula? Oh. <laughs> That's Cholula. Cholula. No. Oh. I'll tell you what, you, people get too excited with spices. Don't I go do, crazy, I don't do. go crazy. Oh, We're yeah. just talking about a little bit. Of Kaido's jeweler. Yep. We're just going to get that spice mix just oh. right. So it's got mustard. That's it's got a little bit of spice. Just a little, a little bit. bit. No, no, no. no, 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 no that's all. Mate, sometimes less is more. Other it's times not more, finding. more is more. <laughs> not you you not never finding. know. Make sure that's cooked. If you, well, if you hold one up, you hold one up, I'm going to tell you if it's cooked or not really quickly. So you look inside that's that. Not cooked. Very raw. Very raw. If you ate that. Snake bite. Yeah, I'm gone. Equivalent to getting bit by a tiger snake. Is the voice a reason from the. The, the age old patriarch. We should put a lid on this. Nah, we should put a lid that, on that. Yeah. And go and have a beer. <laughs> I like the sound of both of those ideas, mate. And see how it's going. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Exactly. Oh, what are oh, you doing? Don't try to drop that. The bottom go man. sit beside the oh, fire, oh, mate. Oh, oh. <laughs> we'll come back. We'll come back yep. in about half an hour. Right, let's go sit by the fire. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, she's been about two wine jacks, so about half an hour. And that is, that's perfect. That's perfect. What, what's, what I'm seeing right here. The chicken is falling off the bone. That's what you need in the, these sort of situations. It smells amazing too. So, noodles are gonna go in. Three minute noodles. Tiny bit more fancy than two minute noodles. Chuck them straight in. I've made enough moisture in there to cater with that. And then, three minutes later, you know, it is up. This is looking really good. That's been about 25 minutes on the boil. The noodles have been about three and a half, four minutes. How good does that look? I'm gonna just pour, hey, hey, hey. pour myself a little bit. There. Oh, look at that, that's smelling really good. You got a bowl, Jogger? Have, Have you, you got a bowl? Yes, ready. Hey. Where's your bowl? <laughs> What's wrong with you, I've mate? I've got a big head. Oh, there's yeah. a, oh, get there's in, a muffin Getting that, getting that. You Thanks, hungry or? Yeah, I am starving. Jogger. Look at that, eh? Hey. Oh, yeah. Who's next, who's Thanks. next? I'm gonna go. All right, so boys, after eating two minute noodles all trip. Yep. Three minute noodles tonight, mate. We're living large. It is quantity over quality. And we have got a lot of quantity here, very little quality. But <laughs> trust me when I say, on, mate. This, this is superb, folks. No, when it's cold and you've been doing it hard for a few days. Have you got a, have you got a name for this? Yeah. What do you call it? I'm calling it ten dollar chicken casserole. It's way it's more. Worth about like, eight bucks. It's superb. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> a little bit more than that. Yeah, Seriously, right. Guys? What do you reckon we get inside the, the little? Fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In, the, in the hut, I reckon. Talk about how many trout I'm gonna catch tomorrow. <laughs> You're not going to kill me. Show me a sauce. You're not going to kill me. Come on, big one. Uh, seven, seven pounder, mate. Seven pounder. Yep. With a good feed under our belts, it's time to put the feet up and enjoy this magical little hut. It's been a hard road, but experiences like this with good mates and some wild stories to tell makes it all worthwhile. First light shows the signs of the epic struggle that has taken place over the last couple of days to get all of these four wheel drives to the end of the thousand dollar track. There's mud everywhere, dents, scratches, we've got clogged radiators, completely ruined alternators and of course Dino's vehicle can't even steer. This has been one heck of a track. Tell you what, I'm absolutely loving the setup in the back of the 80 here. I've got everything where I want it. And this drawer setup in particular has just maximized every square inch of room. I can fit a lot of stuff in here, but more importantly, everything's organized. And one little feature with my drawers that separates this from a lot of other drawers out there 
is the fact there's no actual runners. You're thinking, how does your drawer open so smoothly? Well, it uses Teflon sliders on the back here. So instead of having this much room taken up by runners on each side of the drawer, I'll maximize space so I can fit more of my drawers. And I reckon I've got a better touring setup. I love getting to places like this. And one of the real parts of the adventure for me is just because it's so hard to get in here, checking out who else has made the effort to get into a place like this hut here. And if you look at the dates on this book, people coming in are few and far between, which suggests to me, I mean, there's about a, you know, there's a, there's a four month gap in there, suggests to me this hut is not somewhere people visit every single weekend. If you have a look at it, it's in perfect condition. I reckon that could be the reason why. Now, the last lot of people in here, believe it or not, the last lot of people in here were actually mates of Jocko's. So I reckon I might just put our little uh, group's signature in here. And if you ever get down to the hut, please, Put your name in the book, take a photo of us and get in touch. Love to see it. When you're coming down to Tasmania camping, you've got to expect every type of condition. At the moment, we've got some absolute picture perfect weather. We've seen everything from rain squalls to wind. In fact, we had nearly sideways rain at one stage and you've just got to be prepared for everything. And a setup like this allows me to do exactly that. Now, this is the Adventure King's 270 degree awning. It's a mainstay on old sooty because I can cover so much space around the vehicle and keep undercover. I've also got a standard awning on the other side. So you saw when the track got really tight, we had to camp on the track. Well, I'll be able to get that awning out and um, get a little bit to cover as well. Another cool feature is the camp stretcher because we found ourselves camping on all manner of different grounds from the middle of the track which was caking mud to beaches to all sorts of stuff down in Tasmania and I can get up off the ground. I reckon that setup combined with a lot of cover is absolutely perfect. Now if you wanted to go a step further you could actually in two seconds put a couple of awning walls down you can almost double the size of the undercover area get under your vehicle. Now that's pretty cool considering you're down in Tasmania you want to get out of the elements you've got to have a setup that's going to do the job. The plan of attack for today is to split the convoy into two halves. The first half are going to run into town and try and get a part for Dino and bring it back out again. Second half are staying with the vehicles. The rigs are soon packed up and we're ready to start the long road into town and back to get the parts for Dino's truck. It'll be a long day, but Sean is one of the fishermen that just can't give up and soon he's found an excuse to pull up for one last cast. Well mate, as a fisherman, Trout is not your forte. You should have seen this morning, mate. Yeah, that's the thing with fishing. Yesterday. Okay, it wasn't big, but heck. That's the story of your life, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, this place is blowing my mind. This is the second time I've been in here, and the second time I haven't driven it. <laughs> one day I will drive to the Coldstream Hut. Oh, mate. And this has not been my trip, I'll mate. tell you what, it's one of those trips that will go down for me as one of the toughest yeah, in a long time. Memorable. Long. Yeah, big time. I, I forget how many times you use the winch. Yeah, yeah. How many yeah, yeah. times we, we got the tools out of the back of the 80 series. I mean, it has to be, it had been the top five toughest tracks in Australia. Like and from end with, to end. And endurance wise. Endurance wise, uh, yeah. With the breakages, yeah. with the breakages, it just made it so difficult to get a vehicle that can't steer out of the yeah. middle of that track. I can't believe it. Dino as well. Oh, like, Dino did a, steered that thing what a job. so exactly well. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Didn't nah. complain. We've still got to get out. We've got a hill, we've got a winch up here. We've got a couple of busted trucks. We've got a fair old day ahead of us. Yeah, we do, yeah. But for us folks, we're going to give him half an hour yes. to try and That's catch a trout. That's all they If he doesn't, I don't think it's going to happen. It'll go down in history because this is some of the troutiest water I've ever seen. I got one this morning, mate. You just should have Didn't been there. You have to get up early. It. For us though, folks, it's been a heck of a trip, but it's over. We're going to get out, we're going to fix trucks, get on that big boat that takes us back to the mainland. Next year, we'll be back to Tassie. I love this place. Might see you down here, Jocko. Yep, she sure is a bucket list track, and it's one that I reckon just about everyone should have a crack at once in their life. Stick around now, though, while we go through some of the gear that we've used on this trip, and then my favourite part, the outtakes. Well, mate, after coming out of the $1,000 track full of mud and um, tight bush, it's nice to come oh, to a beautiful campsite like this. this. And even better, to enjoy a cold beer with a fresh, Whoops. locally caught crayfish. Yeah, he's coming, he's he's coming out. Don't, out. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and now's the part of the show. We want to go through some of the gear that made this trip possible. Now, there's been, mate. it's been a very tough trip, mate. Yep. So go through it. Go through it. For me, I, I just, I, I, I get excited even thinking about it. My new canopy from Mitz. I tell yeah. you what, Mitz Alloy, they said to me, mate, what do you want to do? How do you put a, put a canopy on the back of your truck? I told them everything I wanted to put in the back of it. They fast-tracked it, because as you saw in the last episode, I zigged when I should have zagged, smashed my old canopy, and that thing, say it a bit, absolute game changer. I know you don't like that term, but that canopy for me is, It dude, is though. Well, I suppose when you, like, on it, especially Tasmania when it's raining, yep. all your gear nice and dry. So you go good. through deep bog holes, yep. up against trees. Went underwater. What, what a test for it. Fully underwater, everything's dry inside. I, I'm, I'm, 
Well, if you can oh, do well. that, if you can do that, can do you anything. can do anything. And I'll tell you what, speaking of getting some of your gear dirty, mate, my drifter drawers, oh, man. They're, they're insane. I'll keep all my gear, all my tools are in yep. this one. I've got sat phones, camping gear, first aid in this one, and um, this is my cooking drawer, so that's pretty full. Well, it's the smallest of the lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, I've had this for some time now, and um, it's just perfect. It maximizes every square inch of the four-wheel drive. Yep. And one of the things I like about it is the fact that it has no runners, so I really do yeah. get the most amount of draw space in the back of my four-wheel drive. Absolutely, mate. Now, $1,000 track, we were out there for three days, three nights. There were times there where I thought we were going to have to live on the $1,000 track, and one thing I think you can't go down any track in the four-wheel drive without taking is a quality flashlight. Mm. Now, for me, we used the whole range of Nebo lights. Head torches, we had right the, big the big ones, yep. and yep. we needed it too. Because you were running around with this bad boy? Yep. That's yours, I should put that back before, exactly I, before right. I pinch it. <laughs> Those Nebo lights have changed the way we camp out here. Um, I've got them underneath the canopy, I don't need them now, of course, because I've got lights in there, but before I had it, I used them on the side. We used the head torches, the big ones. They're in the truck charging all the time, USB. Yeah, you don't Perfect, go bush without them, do absolutely, you, mate? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I want to take this opportunity. Thank you for watching our show, the $1,000 track. That is a Ooh. super tough one. Please leave your comments below. Like always, we always get dipped down yeah. through those comments. Have a look to see what you guys have got to say. What is the toughest track you've ever been on? That's a dollar track. I reckon that is one of the most challenging tracks, especially when you chuck a couple of broken vehicles in the mix. Yep. Holy heck. So thanks it. again for watching. We'll, we'll catch you next time. On. Let's cut this up. Come on, oh, no. hurry up. Ooh, I'll get the big bit, right? And you can have the head, fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine That's with me. <laughs> Give us a clap. Sorry, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, go. you, go. you sure? Yeah. Well, uh, we reckon that being ready for the worst is better than being preparing for failure is better than to can, if you continue to. Yeah, that's pretty much on. <laughs> well, you've already put mud on the dash. What are you doing? Have you no respect for my car? Oh no, we didn't have a battery. This is tragic. Oh, phone gets a little charged and you get a little charge in a sec. Share it around, boys and girls. I'm on a 45 degree angle. Oh, oh man. Yeah, you just leave, Jocko. <laughs> Real good. Everybody relax ah. when you're sitting in the D-Max. Oh, dusty boy. Give me that thing. Oh, that's it. You stall it and stay there. <laughs> Good job, mate. Shut up, everyone. I'll do an impression of it. It's of Graham. <laughs> Dad. What? Yep, yep. Right, before I let go, he's in the drink. I hope my doctor's not watching this. Maddie, if you're watching this, I'm not using my arm. There, there's stuff down there, but the sheet metal and stuff back yeah. down there. We almost just kissed. I oh, know, that's how it happens. That's how it happens, folks. Right. To come to places like this, to get bogged in places like this, to wreck your car in places like this, this is a single reason I own a full drive. Graham Cahill, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> This has to be washed, it's so festy. Oh. Does it sink? That's what smelled yesterday. <laughs> oh, 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 I didn't let go! Oh, 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 I didn't let go! I didn't let go! Okay, okay you good? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, mate.